Um, well, my desire to tell my story and its complexity, which is not strictly a jazz story. I mean, it's about um, being a, a gay man in the jazz community at a time when that was risky. Uh, and coming out about that, coming out as an uh, HIV positive musician, also being in New York in the late 70s and early 80s before jazz was institutionalized at Lincoln Center and F SF Jazz and all that. It was kind of a more oral tradition. Uh, everybody was like available. You could hang out at Bradley's with Art Blakey and Tommy Flanagan and Jimmy Rolls and you know, nobody was sequestered with managers and publicists. It was, everybody was kind of just hanging out, you know, and of course there was drink and drugs and fun stuff, but uh, to me as a, you know, somebody in 21, 22, it was incredibly romantic. I got to play with a lot of my heroes and hang out with them. Uh, so I was at New York at a particular time, not just for the jazz world, but also for the gay world. It was only 10 years after the Stonewall riots, which basically, which were in 1969, which basically established the rights for gay people to congregate. Um, so it's a very multifaceted story, but the things that led to me uh, uh, to doing it, to really wanting to do it, and it does take work. Um, I did a lengthy interview with uh, the pianist Ethan Iverson, who is a former student and has a fantastic blog called Do the Math. And we did this very long interview and I talked a lot about that time period. And a lot of people read it and they said, you should really write a book. It's an incredible interview. And then I also read uh, a National Book Award winning autobiography by Patti Smith called Just Kids, uh, which is set in the early 70s, the beginning of the punk movement in New York and her uh, relationship with the photographer Robert Maplethorpe, an artist Robert Maplethorpe. So uh, I thought, if I can tell my story and be as literary as that, then I think I really should do that. And I'm, as I said, I'm approaching 60. You know, my health is great. My career is at a pretty much high point right now, and I still feel like I'm have more to do, and I'm getting better, maybe which is a good thing to look forward to as you enter in a new decade. Um, I'm very appreciative, uh, uh, and maybe I'm a case of somebody who's kind of stuck to his guns all these years and not compromised, you know, and now people are like, oh, Fred. Uh, anyway, uh, I am working with a collaborator, and uh, through his uh, agent, we got a fantastic deal with the Crown Division of Random House, which is a very big imprint. And I think they're looking at this as a book that's going to have reach beyond just another jazz autobiography published by University Press, you know, because there's the social angle, the gay angle, the health angle, a coma survivor. You know, I've got kind of a lot going on. So uh, projected, we're, we have to deliver the manuscript in May of 2016, which is 10 months from now. And then the books will be available in early 2017. And at the same time, there are two women that have been doing a documentary film on me for a few years. And so they're gonna try to coincide the film release with the book release and uh, see where that, where that goes. You know all about media. Hi, I'm Fred Hirsch, and for more videos, please go to jazztimes.com.